Hello, I'm uh, Paul Beckwith. I, uh, I'm an engineer. I have an engineering physics degree at McMaster University. Um, and also, um, I have a, uh, ma an MSc degree, Master of Science degree in uh, physics, in, in laser, laser physics, uh, also from McMaster University. Uh, then I worked for many years in uh, research labs, uh, in industry, um, in diff various fields. Um, and uh, now I'm back at the uh, at school at the University of I'm at the University of Ottawa. Um, I'm a part-time professor teaching um, meteorology, climatology, in second year um, geography, uh, the geography department. And I'm also working doing uh, research on abrupt climate change, looking at how quickly the climate is the climate system can change both in the past from the paleo records and uh, what it's doing now, how quickly it's changing now. And, uh, but the main thing I wanna talk about for a few minutes today is the peer review science process and how I feel that it is, it's, it's just not meeting the challenges of climate change. It's not, it's not meeting the, um, it doesn't have the urgency that the uh, problem um, presents to humanity. And I'll explain kind of why. Well, the scientific method, the basis of all science is, base, is, is uh, first of all, it's, it builds up, right? I mean, you take whatever, all the previous knowledge about a particular field, and you try to advance that knowledge. So you generally have a hypothesis about how, uh, about some aspect of the physical system. Um, so you make your hypothesis, then you, uh, design and um, do experiments to try to test that hypothesis. So you collect data, um, you do measurements, you access other people's data, then you, then you analyze it, look for the trends, the connections and so on, um, try to make an advancement over what previous people have done and published, and then you actually find a suitable journal, you write, write up your paper in a sort of a standard format, submit it to the journal, um, and then it undergoes peer review. So there's experts in the field, the specific field that you're writing the paper about, and they will read the paper, they will make comments on it, make suggestions for changes, um, and the paper will either be rejected as not being original enough for, for other reasons, and, uh, or it will be accepted with revisions or just accepted outright, which is, which is rare. Usually, if it's accepted, it's accepted with revisions. So then you go and you um, rejig the paper, make it better, improve it following the suggestions of the expert reviewers, resubmit it, and then hopefully the process could repeat or it can be accepted. So typically, from the time you submit a paper to the time it's published, it might take a, it might take a year. Now, uh, with the very rapid changes that are occurring um, in the climate system um, at present, you know, a year, a year, a year is just too long. So what a, what a number of people, what a number of climatologists are doing is um, they, as soon as, as soon as they measure something, you know, if it's a significant change in the system, if it's, imp if, if it's important information for humanity, like let's say they're measuring sudden big increase in methane emissions coming from the Arctic, you know, why, you don't want to wait a year to get this inform information out to the public. And that goes against the grain of, of the normal scientific attitude. You know, you collect your measurements, you do your data, do your analysis, and then publish it. And then when it's, you know, and then submit it to a journal. And when it's published, then the world knows about it. And quite often, you know, in, in, in most fields of science, um, the scientists, they don't bypass that step. Like, they don't release the information to the public until it actually comes out and is published. You know, the fear is somebody else will come and use that data and scoop you or take your ideas. But climate change is too... And it's too important an issue to, to follow this rigid scientific process. You know, if you find out something important, you know, and then wait a year for it to release it, I mean, it's a, it's a year wasted. I mean, we, the world, um, the world, people in the world need to take action on climate change. The rates of climate change um, are extremely fast, and we need to start doing things very quickly to address the problem. So what many scientists or what many climate scientists are doing now is when they get the data, 
They put it online immediately. They might write a blog about it and say what's happening. Um, and uh, other scientists will go on that blog, they'll read about it, and they can carry, they can analyze more data, they can collect more data, they can use the blog to, um, to uh, follow different research paths to get more information on the problem, depending on how important it is. Um, so, so blogs and uh, even video logs, I'm seeing lots of people that uh, you know now they put out a paper and associated with the paper will be a video trying to exp trying to break down the detailed analysis in the paper which is so these peer reviewed papers are, are all intended for other scientists you know the, the the public in a lot of cases the public can't even access them if they're in journals because there's a pay, there's a paywall you know, and if you have to pay 35 bucks or something to, to read a paper, people aren't going to do that. Um, and that's about a typical price. So, so uh, there's, uh, so, so the blogs are happening from the scientists before they're peer reviewed, you know, uh, before their papers are peer reviewed, also the video logs. Also, people are using online journals a lot more. So the turnaround time for submitting a paper and for it to be um, reviewed and then uh, published online. Uh, that is a lot shorter than this than the traditional year or so. Uh, but then a lot of these online journals are, are springing up, you know, from various places, and they're not reputable journals. You know, you'll get journals. So so the, there's a proliferation of journals. So it becomes even more difficult to know what is good information and what is not. And in that case, then you need to more rely on the names of people. Like, uh, you know, you get to know sort of people, um, you get to read what they do, and you get to develop a trust on, on what they say. Um, so, so uh, you know, that can, that, that can, can also help. Um, but um, there is a big problem um, with climate change information getting out to society. Um, the extreme weather events that were happening now are basically hammer blows to society, hammer blows to cities, hammer blows to civilization, hammer blows to pipelines and um, train tracks and, and uh, coastal regions. Uh, I'm talking about extreme rainfall events causing flooding. I'm talking about uh, you know, extreme snow events, extreme cold events, extreme warm events rapid swings in temperature. I mean, the public is, is wakening up. Um, how can anybody not be noticing what is happening? But basically, the, uh, the, the um, so the public is starting to wake up, but it's still not enough. I mean, scientists, um, ideally, they want to sit in their lab, they want to do the measurements. Most of, the, most of them are of an introverted um, nature, and they want to publish this stuff and just go on to their other ideas and publishing and stay in that type of situation. You know, they're not very comfortable talking to the media, they're not very, they don't like um, talking to the general public too much, most of them. And th this has to change um, in climate science. Um, so basically, you know, I, it, I think it's very, very important for um, research in climate science to get out there as soon as it's done. Uh, to be available to everybody, uh, scientists, public, everybody, um, to access and to, um, and because, because we need to speed up the process. We need to speed up the knowledge gathering process uh, with climate change. We just don't have the luxury of, of uh, having a year between data collection and peer-reviewed publication. So I think it's very important that um, scientists, um, they, they need to go and talk to the general public, they need to go and talk to policy makers, they need to go and talk to politicians, um, and uh, we need to get action from all levels, from all countries on, on climate change. This, this, is, this problem is becoming far too serious to just continue along the present path that we've been going because the, the, the um, I mean, scientists have known about climate change for a long, long time. In fact, over a hundred years ago, back of the envelope calculations were made that if you double CO2, 
uh, in the atmosphere, you're going to you're going to raise the temperatures um, significantly. I don't know what their numbers were. I think they said something like uh, you know three degrees Celsius or four degrees global average temperatures. You know, with a doubling of CO two, and uh, you know these numbers are right in the range of what we think today. You know, it's like the uh, you know it's like three to three doubling of CO two. You know, it's something like one to four point five degrees. Um, three's right in the middle, but more recent data than the IPCC um, report um, is showing that the sensitivity is even higher. And you know, there's no way it's one point five degrees. Um, the, the lower range has to be raised up. Um, so um, you know, it, it's uh, the, the the present system uh, just isn't working. I mean, the, the the public got completely misled on the issue of climate change. Um, you know, one of the reasons is, the, is, is based on the scientists, you know, ha the peer review process and the public doesn't read the peer review papers and the scientists don't communicate what's in the peer review papers enough to the public. But, you know, another big factor has been the deliberate, um, the deliberate fraud that has been going on, um, funded to the tune of a billion dollars a year, roughly. Um, to say that climate change is not a problem. I mean, that is a, is a huge, huge problem. I mean, you can't just blame the uh, scientists. But we need to modify the peer review process, I think. Um, modify the way that climate science information is, 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 is uh, collected and disseminated to, to, uh, to everybody. Um, and I have some ideas on that, which I should probably uh, talk about in another video. So thank you for now.